I remember when I got an IBM Selectronic that had the X backspace so I could correct letters and I thought nothing's ever going to be cooler than this. <laughs> it's impossible. And that's my, you know, I'm 67, that's my generation. Would it be fair to say to you, and you say it needs some breathing space, I'm, I'm asking you, do you, would it be fair to say that the younger generation gets this oh, more but, so than my generation? I, with any new technology, I think that's the case. And do you think it fair to say, for instance, um, I would doubt very much that I will get into Bitcoins. Um, I don't really understand it even still. And we're on our 11th meeting. I'm, I'm, we're lucky Paul does. I, but Paul, yes, yeah, Senator Massacott does. And, but I know that when I talk to people, younger people, about this committee, uh, they totally get it. Like, they don't have any questions at all. They're like, this is where we're going. Mm -hmm. This is how we're going to get there. And, in fact, I've been told to keep my old nose out of it. Um, because... And I think you explained it. How much time does it take to breathe for this? How, how long do you think that would be? I mean, how, how rapid is this going to come upon us? I, I would estimate that Bitcoin today is approximately in the same position that the Internet was in 1992. And in 1992, when I used email, it required uh, command line Unix skills typed into a mainframe. And it, it was very, very difficult. Yes. Uh, approximately 10 years after that... Um, it, it had already reached mainstream adoption among especially younger people. And almost exactly 20 years after that, my mother got her first iPad and was able to send her first email. Uh, it took some while until the technology went from something extremely esoteric that was only the purview of someone working in a computer science department until my mother could do it with a swipe of her finger and she's a, a self-acknowledged technophobe. And so it may take some time. What I can tell you for sure is I think this one's going to be about three times faster. And that's because we're not deploying physical infrastructure and we already have the internet as a medium on which we can spread this technology. So I, I believe that within eight years, we're going to see very mainstream applications that are going to be much easier to use and secure uh, that will allow uh, consumers to use Bitcoin in a way that uh, feels very comfortable and um, at the moment we're not there. Okay, uh, one more, just one more question. Um, the question I have is that if you don't need any centralized oversight, who provides, who's, I mean, I, you say, well, the, the, uh, the front end user and the end user control the control the whole thing. If there is nobody finding out who is the front end user, mm -hmm. how can we be so sure that we won't see uh, ISIS or one of these other whack job crews um, use this as a method of transferring money around the world? I firmly believe that the possibility uh, for positive use of this technology so far outweighs the very small, small possibility for negative use of this technology. The truth is that ISIS is probably using pallets of money that they stole from uh, uh, from allies <laughs> during their reign of terror and uh, and not Bitcoin. I think it's it's uh, really. A matter of understanding that to limit a technology that has the possibility of bringing uh, economic inclusion to billions of people who do not have it today. In, in the same way that uh, cell phone technology allowed entire nations to leapfrog the landline and land in a technology realm and achieve communications uh, that would be unthinkable, uh, Bitcoin can do the same for banking and finance. And it can empower billions of people around the world in areas such as uh, remittances, uh, international finance, international credit, uh, accessing liquidity, accessing loans, and things like that. And as with any technology, this technology will reflect uh, society. And there will be a tiny, tiny, tiny minority who will try to use it for evil. But I have full faith that the law enforcement capabilities properly exercised can follow 
funds on Bitcoin just as they can in the normal financial networks, probably more so than they can in traditional financial networks. Furthermore, I think Bitcoin is the most um, open and transparent of cryptocurrencies. There are already 500 others, and I believe that if Bitcoin is not uh, given the opportunity to uh, to work in a way that empowers people, uh, eventually criminals will move to far more stealthy and far less open uh, currencies and use those instead. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for coming today. I very much appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir.